chemical reactor design where you're going to learn about rates, reactors, and beyond. Okay, we are in lecture 14 where basically it's a tutorial session. So I'm going to leave you with these questions here. And maybe you would like to test yourself by solving this problem and you can find the final answer of the last portion of this problem which requires you to calculate the value of Kc at 310 and actually it's not the Kc in the figure or not the Kc which is given it's the Kc which is in the rate law. Okay, so lecture 15. Lecture 15, I have divided it into two segments just to make the size of the file smaller. In lecture 15, we're going to find volume as a function of x and then epsilon as a function of x. Why are, we do, why are we doing so? Because we are interested in finding concentration as a function of x. So for a batch system, concentration ci is a function of ni, or equals actually I should say, equals ni over v, where both ni and v are function of x. We already have learned how to write ni as a function of x. When we go to a flow system, that concentration now equals fi over epsilon, the volumetric flow rate. And we learned how to write if i is a function of x. So obviously now you know why we need in this lecture to write epsilon as a function of x and v as a function of x as well. Okay, let's start with liquid phase concentrations. For liquids, volume change with reaction is negligible when no phase changes are taking place. Consequently, we can assume that V equals V naught for, for batch reactors or epsilon equals epsilon naught for flow reactors. And again, we're talking about liquid phase reactions and therefore we're talking about liquid phase concentrations. Therefore, the concentration of a species I in a liquid phase can be written as a function of x as follows ci equals ni over v again writing ni the function of x and v simply equals v naught upon simplification we get ci equals ca naught times epsilon uh, sorry theta i plus nu i times x and please guys do not do not memorize this equation whatever you're gonna do please start with the fundamental definition of concentration so always start with the fundamental definition of concentration and likewise for flow systems ci equals fi over epsilon and because it's a liquid phase reaction, so epsilon equals epsilon naught because again the volumetric flow rate or the volume does not change as the reaction progresses. And upon simplification, you can write these two terms as CA naught. Okay, let's talk about gas phase concentrations. For liquid phase reactions, we said V equal V naught for batch reactors, epsilon equal epsilon naught for flow reactors, and therefore we arrived at this equation after some simplifications. For gas phase reactions, gas volume or volumetric flow rate is a strong function of, so, the volume of a gas is a strong function of what? Okay, 
it's strong function of that total number of moles right temperature pressure okay so that means therefore one cannot always use the above equation these equations to express concentration as a function of x for gas phase reactions because simply volume is not constant not necessarily constant in a gas phase reaction neither is the volumetric flow rate for a flow system now we will consider cases where v or epsilon vary as the reaction progresses for a gas phase reaction okay let's start with variable volume reactors although variable volume batch reactors are seldom encountered in labs or industry they have been used to collect reaction data for gas phase reactions an everyday example of a variable volume batch reactor is your con your car engine or the combustion chamber of an internal combustion engine engine so basically you have here this is a four stroke engine through the or during the combustion stroke you have a chemical reaction and the cylinder is a closed system but the piston is moving down therefore the volume of the reaction mixture is changing so you have a variable volume reactor so i have a question for you here the ni expression that we recently derived can it be used in both constant volume and varying volume cases of course the answer is yes it's the concentration ci x that are not the same in the two cases for gas phase reactions how concentration can be expressed as a function of x well individual concentrations can be determined by expressing v as a function of x using an appropriate equation of a state for example we can use the compressibility factor equation of state and this way now i can measure or follow how the volume is changing as the reaction is progressing and i'm sure that you're familiar with that all the terms mentioned in the compressibility factor equation of state well this equation is valid at any point in the system at any time so let's work together to find v as a function of x for a batch reactor with variable volume okay so we already said that ci equals ni over v and ni is in a naught times theta i plus nu i x so what's remaining now is to find v as a function of x okay let's start with this compressibility equation of state compressibility factor equation of state okay so this is the equation and we all know that at time zero everything is naught p naught v naught z naught and t naught and you have here t naught upon manipulations basically you are dividing two equations upon each other so you'll get v equals v naught times the ratio of pressure ratio of temperature ratio of z and ratio of total number of moles however we want v as a function of x so where do you think that we can introduce x in this equation yes correct we can introduce x here and i'm sure that you remember the stoichiometric table remember the stoichiometric table here when we found nt so basically nt was nt naught plus delta times na naught x correct here we go i'm rewriting it again here and if we divide by nt naught then we get here we get this equation divide by nt naught so now we have nt over nt naught and nt naught divided by nt naught is simply one and then here 
we have in T naught as well. So let me remind you here in T naught and here also in T naught. And again, this is also divided by in T naught. Okay, so let's look at this equation. Let's define, let's define in A naught over in T naught as the mole fraction, correct? We know that already, that we don't need to define it. We know that already in A naught over in T naught is simply Y A naught, Y A naught. So let's define delta times y a naught. Let's define this guy. Let's define this guy here. Let's define it as epsilon, epsilon. And we call it molar expansion factor, molar expansion factor. Therefore, I can rewrite the above equation as, so we say this guy is nt over nt naught. This guy is 1, and then we have delta times y a naught, which is simply epsilon, and then we have x. So now we can substitute for this equation here, this part of the equation, nt over nt naught, substitute with this equation. Okay, so here we go. v equals v naught times blah 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 and now we have 1 plus epsilon x so now we have v as a function of x and this is what we required earlier okay in the gas phase systems that we shall be studying the temperature and pressure are such that z will not change significantly during the course of the reaction hence we can assume z equals z naught therefore this ratio becomes 1 and then we can rewrite the above equation this way and in fact this is very easy to remember how do you remember well v for a gas should equal v naught but it does not because the volume is function of three things it's function of pressure temperature and number of moles so we correct the V naught for these three things. We correct it for number of moles. Remember, this is basically in T over in T naught. Therefore, here we have one plus epsilon X. So we're correcting for the change in number of moles. And then we are correcting for the change in temperature. Okay, T over t naught because as the temperature increases the volumetric or the volume increases and then we correct it for pressure and as you know as the pressure increases the volume decreases so this equation must be used for a variable volume batch reactor to find v as a function of x I have a question for you. Is the following equation useful even in a constant volume situation? So a case where V equals V naught. Does this equation uh, is this equation still useful? And yes it is because if you have V equals V naught then you can rearrange the equation and now we have P as a function of X and T and you can use it and this example that we have solved in chapter one. Remember, the question was determine the pressure at the calculated time. And the reaction was a gas phase reaction carried out in a constant volume batch reactor where V equaled V naught. And we wanted to calculate P. Now you can calculate P through this equation easily. Okay, let's go to continuous flow reactors with variable volumetric flow rate. A situation where one encounters a varying flow rate 
occurs quite frequently in gas phase reactions that do not have an equal number of product and reactant moles. For example, let's look at this reaction where we're producing ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen. What happens to the molar flow rate, the total molar flow rate and volumetric flow rate as the above reaction progresses? So you know that as the above reaction progresses in a continuous flow reactor, let's say a plug flow reactor or a packed bed reactor, as the reaction progresses, you have more number of moles converting to fewer number of moles. So the FT decreases and if FT decreases, then epsilon or the volumetric flow rate decreases as well if we keep the temperature and pressure constant. So in flow systems where this type of reaction occurs, the molar flow rate and hence the volume flow rate will be changing as the reaction progresses. Okay, so let's talk about flow reactors with variable volumetric flow rate. And please note that we're talking about variable volumetric flow rate. Why is that? Because again, at the end of the day, we are interested in concentration. And concentration Ci equals Fi, Fi over epsilon. And we need to find epsilon as a function of x why we need epsilon as a function of x because we need concentration as a function of x why we need concentration as a function of x because we need to write minus ra right minus ra as a function of x why we need minus ra as a function of x because we want to use the design equation where we use it to design a reactor to find the volume. And in the design equation, we need a relationship between minus Ra and X in order for, for us to be able to use it. Okay, so here we divide our task into two parts. Again, first part, finding concentration as a function of X, but then the other part, we try to find concentration as a function of molar flow rate rather than the function of x. Okay, so requirement number one, finding ci as a function of x through using epsilon as a function of x. And let's go back to the batch system where we derived v as a function of x. And obviously we can use it to find for a flow system, we can find epsilon as a function of x. Again, epsilon equals epsilon naught, right? Epsilon equals epsilon naught, uh, epsilon equals epsilon naught times three correction factors. What are these correction factors? It's the number of moles, because I know that if the number of moles or the molar flow rate is changing, that will change the volume of flow rate. And the other correction factor is temperature, and the last one is the pressure. Remember that this equation is valid only for gases, ideal gases, in order to be precise. Okay, so since Ci equals Fi over epsilon, therefore we can write the Ci this way. So you have Fi. Okay, if i is a function of x, you know how to write it. And you have epsilon, you know how to write it as a function of x as well. And then we do some manipulation to find ci as a function of x. And you can see that x appears in two places. Okay, let's look at requirement number two. That is finding concentration as a function of molar flow rate. Okay. So, knowing that the concentration is Fi as a, uh, divided by epsilon, how can we write Ci as a function of molar flow rate? 
Okay, let me be clear with you. Sometimes X is not useful. For example, if you have multiple reactions, if you have multiple reactions, we don't talk about X. Why is that? Because it could be converted to a desired product or it could be converted to a undesired product. So if we say that while well, our conversion was 100%, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have something good. Why is that? Because all of A could convert to U. So instead of that, I deal with molar flow rate. So if I tell you all well, the molar flow rate of D is 99 moles uh, mol per second and the molar flow rate of U is 1 mol per second. So now I know that while well, I have good selectivity and I have good system. Okay, so let's find epsilon as a function of molar flow rate rather than finding epsilon as a function of x. How can we do that? Very, very simple. Again, we use the compressibility factor equation of a state. We divide the volumetric flow rate at any location in the reactor with that at the entrance of the reactor and neglecting the change in z and rearranging we get to this equation. So again, the volumetric flow rate equals the entering volumetric flow rate times three correction factors. The correction factor for the number of moles, the correction factor for temperature, and the correction factor for pressure change. And since Ci equals Fi over epsilon, we can actually keep Fi because I'm interested in writing concentrations function for uh, molar flow rate. I keep it as is. All what I do is I replace epsilon with this equation and then rearrange to get to this equation. Okay, kindly guys, do not memorize this equation. How can you find it? You can find this equation starting from this equation and then and then you substitute for epsilon which is coming from this equation do you need to memorize this equation well you know how to write it because you know that epsilon equals epsilon not times the three correction factors so upon manipulation you get ct naught ci equals ct naught fi over ft times p over p naught times t naught over t Okay, so we talked about the change in the volume of gas or the volumetric flow rate of a gas and we said we can find it through the appropriate equation for state because I know that the volume of a gas or the volumetric flow rate of a gas is a function of three things, the total number of mole, the temperature and the pressure. But what about the volume of the liquid? Is there an equation that describes the change in the volume of liquid with temperature and pressure? Okay, we know that the volume of a liquid is weak function of temperature and very weak function of pressure, but is there an equation? Yes, there is. And if you go back to your thermodynamics one note, you will remember that you have something called volume expansivity, beta, and also you have something called isothermal compressibility, kappa. So beta basically tells you how the volume of a liquid changes with temperature at a constant pressure, and kappa tells you how the volume of a liquid changes with pressure at a constant temperature and then you can use this equation to find V2 
from the knowledge of V1 and the beta and the change in temperature, kappa and the change in pressure. However, this is not the topic, it's not one of the topics that we are interested in in this course.